Welcome back to episode two of my Tesla Robo Taxi video series. Here we're starting off at the Barton Hills Market, and then we end up at the Home Depot, which falls on the edge of the geofence. Um, this is probably one of the more exciting rides that, that I take throughout my journey here over the weekend that I recorded videos for. Um, we do experience for the first time an intervention, so it was interesting to see how Tesla reacted there. Um, as we get to that incident, I will definitely call it some important context. Again, I think that they responded in the right way here just to take the necessary precautions. But overall, in terms of ride comfort, um, again, one of the smoother rides we've taken with the service. Uh, I continue to enjoy comfort more on the service than I have with any way more rides I've taken in the past. And I've done about 10 rides with them so far. So, and again... Good to see from an early, early version of this service, and it will only get better. So without further ado, let's go for a ride and see how RoboTaxi handles this route. All right, so at the beginning of this ride, you can see already there's a pedestrian near us. He's a bit perplexed that there's no driver in the front seat, something we get a lot. But then we have another pedestrian here. Car confidently yields to them and then inches forward. Now, if you notice the wheel... And just the, the view of the car here, we're not having any jerky throttle brake inputs. The car is confident. It inches forward and goes when it's clear to do so. Um, and in terms of just ride comfort, Tesla has prioritized this quite a bit from my experience. Um, I've taken 31 rides with the service so far. I have yet to get car sick. Uh, I can't say the same about Waymo. I've got about 10 rides with them uh, over the course of my history with them. And I've probably gotten car sick on half of their rides, uh, if not more. So. Um, Tesla's already off to a great start, and this service is only going to get better, so pretty exciting to see so far. So as we approach this intersection here, it's a bit tricky. The cars to our left and right do not stop, I mean, there's actually a pretty steep hill to our right, so the view is not the greatest. We do have a little bit of occlusions to our left as well that you can't see. So the car does a great job of inching forward to where it can see and then initiates its left turn when it's safe to do so. So another great unprotected left turn uh, from the robot taxi here.
right, so after 10 rides to this point, this is my first intervention. And it's an interesting one because it's a scenario I'm sure that happens in cities when they have events like this. But um, the road is not blocked off. However, the cop is escorting a, a group of cyclists, probably a couple hundred. It's part of an event. And so the right behavior here would be to wait till they all go by and then proceed regardless of the traffic light signal, right? And unfortunately here, the car does try to proceed and mix in with the cyclists. Um, so the safety observer does a great job just from a courteous perspective there to stop the car by pressing the button on the screen there. So um, again, a bit of an edge case. This is one I think that would happen, you know, in other cities it frequently, but happened nonetheless. So something the service will have to deal with going forward. But hopefully from a data collection perspective, this was helpful for the AI team to train off of and, and go from there. So here we have the remnants of that cycling event. These are some of the stragglers that are left behind. Again, they are police escorted. So you'll see that cop car come first, and then you'll see some of the remaining cyclists come through. Um, the car doesn't try to attempt any lane changes or impede them in any way. So the, you know, the system stays engaged um, and no disengagement was required at this point. So again, the only intervention on the ride was the one we just saw. So I just want to call it again, this is an example, but um, you can tell just how smooth FSD in the RoboTaxi is when it comes to decelerating, um, especially for traffic lights and stop signs and so forth. Um, if anything, it's a little bit smoother than FSD that's publicly available today. Um, and it leads to just you know a more confident experience for, for riders, right? They don't get car sick, but again, I'm very sensitive to that. If you have to be car sick in a RoboTaxi, you can't say the same for Waymo.
So one thing I found interesting in Austin, there's several crosswalks that have like traffic lights on them, like the one you see here. Um, as you see, the pedestrian entered the intersection here, and the car does a great job of constantly slowing down, um, detecting the traffic lights above as well, and then proceeding once the pedestrian is clearly on the sidewalk there. So very smooth and confident. You know, if I'm a pedestrian, I see this sort of behavior. It tells me again, the car sees me and is reacting appropriately to me versus, you know, trying to inch forward or move while that person's in the crosswalk. All right, so unfortunately here my GoPro froze up. However, towards the end of the route here, um, the car did enter the parking lot area of the Home Depot. There was an intersection in the parking lot or approaching the parking lot where it looked like they had a stop sign attached previously and for whatever reason, it was no longer there. The car did hesitate for a second as it I'm sure had that maybe in its old map data or whatever. However, um, the car proceeded, you know, after a second or so of waiting there and coming to a stop and then proceeding forward. The car then dropped us off right by the front door, as you would expect a good Uber driver to do. Um, and then we got out and proceeded on our way, and so did the car. So overall, pretty darn good ride. Um, the intervention was definitely interesting, uh, definitely an edge case, but you know one that Tesla will have to account for going forward. And I think there was some important context they can use from that data collection there to train off for future reference. So anyways, thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next one.